Welcome back to part two of chapter four, or module four, where we're learning to multiply and divide monomials. We're going to start this lesson off with a video that will take you from where we left off in the last one. You can simplify the quotient of powers with the same base. Write 3 to the 6th power as a product of factors. Write 3 squared as a product of factors. Divide out common factors and simplify. 4 factors of 3 remain in the numerator. So the quotient is 3 to the 4th power. Notice that the difference of the exponents in the original powers is the exponent in the final quotient. You can divide powers with the same base by subtracting the exponents. The quotient is x to the fourth power. Well, that was pretty darned easy. I think we're going to be able to knock this part out in no time at all. At least I hope we are. Now, once again, we've got our vocab term right there, but we've got the actual definition down here. It says the quotient of powers property means to divide powers with the same basis. All you have to do is subtract their exponents. Looking at it with algebra, a to the m divided by a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. Of course, a cannot equal zero because that would be undefined. And finally, 3 to the 7th divided by 3 cubed is the same thing as saying 3 to the 7th minus 3, also known as 3 to the 4th. It really is that easy working with these numbers. So let's take a look at this problem right here. We have x to the 8th power divided by x squared. And we're going to use a quotient of powers property to solve it. You have a common base involved here of x. So all we're going to have to do is take that common base and subtract the exponents. So when we're working through it, now you have the base x raised to the 8 minus 2. 8 minus 2 is going to be 6. So your answer is going to be x to the 6th power, which if it gives you a warm fuzzy, you can put in right there. Pretty darn easy, isn't it? Now they should describe another method you could use to simplify. And what I'm going to show you is what they actually just showed you a minute ago where, where in the video. So we had 8 to the x minus, or divided by 8, um, I'm sorry, we had x to the 8th divided by x squared. And what we're going to do is multiply them out. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And of course, all these need multiplication dots in them. Divided by 1, 2 with multiplication dot. And then if you were to divide these out, that would divide out, that would divide out. And how many 8s would you have left here? Or x's would you have left here? Well, you would have 6x's left, which is the same answer you came up with the other way of doing the problem. And now it's going to be your turn to work one of these on your own. As soon as it loads, here you go. x to the 10th power divided by x cubed. Go ahead and pause the video. Make sure you're giving me good quality supporting work like I've been giving you. So we have our problem. x to the 10 divided by x cubed. We could rewrite that as x to the 10 minus 3, which is also known as x to the seventh power. From here, go back to your problem, and, well, that's not it, and that's not it, so where's it at? Oh, right there, answer D, answer checks, everybody's happy. So let's start applying this to some number problems that make a little bit confusing when we're reading them, but are actually going to be very simple. Hawaii's total shoreline is about 2 to the 10th miles. Yes, I know. Who's really going to write it that way? But we're going to say it is. New Hampshire's shoreline is about 2 to the 7th miles long. How many times longer is Hawaii's shoreline than New Hampshire? And what operation will you perform in order to find out how many times longer it is? The answer to that question is going to be division. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our problem up to where we have 2 to the 10th divided by 2 to the 7th, as you can see right here. That leaves 2 to the 10 minus 7, which is also going to be known as 2 cubed. And then 2 cubed is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8. 
and check your answer. The answer checks. So Hawaii's shoreline is eight times longer than New Hampshire's shoreline. And we can take and put that information right here. This says Hawaii's shoreline is going to be about eight times longer than New Hampshire's. Easy math. Anybody can do this stuff. And now, once again, you are going to get the opportunity to solve a problem. I know you love these opportunities. The table shows the approximate number of native speakers of certain languages, and we're going to let all that load. So French is 2 to the 6. Meanwhile, Sicilian is 2 squared, and we want to know how many times more people speak French than Sicilian. You go ahead and pause the video and work on that. All right, so we'll get some nice clean real estate to work with here. We've got 2 to the 6 divided by 2 squared. I'm pretty sure those were our numbers. From here, we can take and rewrite that as 2 to the 6 minus 2, which is also known as 2 to the 4th. And 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. So it's going to be 16 times as many people that speak French as there are Sicilian. 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. There's our answer. And it checks. Easy math. But what if we had a really scary looking problem like this one? It is just as easy. It just has more pieces to it. This is not going to be hard to do at all, guys. Just sit back and watch. I promise you will see what I'm talking about. So they've given the problem set up here, and notice you have common bases. Common basis of 2, common basis of 3, and common basis of 5. So we're going to scroll through what they do, and the next thing they did is use their commutative and associative properties to regroup them. Remember, commutative property says order doesn't matter when multiplying, and associative says grouping doesn't matter when multiplying. From here, we're going to take and say that 2 to the 5th minus 2, that's 2 to the 5th minus 2. 3 to the 5th divided by 3 to the 4th is 3 to the 5th minus 4. And the same thing going on for 5. And remember, if you don't have an exponent over a number, that exponent is always going to equal to 1. From there, it's just a matter of doing some basic math. 2 to the 5th minus 2 is 2 cubed. 3 to the 5th minus 4 is 3 to the 1st. 5 to the um, squared minus 1 is 5 to the 1st. And now we're closing in on the final problem. 2 cubed, that's going to be 8. 3 to the 1st is 3. 5 to the 1st is 5. 8 times 3, that's going to be 24. And 24 times 5, that's going to be 120 for your final answer. Yes, I did that in my head. So you could take and write 120 here and get the happy ding sound, but I'm not going to bother because it says it right there. And once again, you are getting an opportunity to solve a problem all by yourself. Pause the video while I take this phone call from my amazing wife. Did you get your answer? Let's see how it works when I do it. I'm going to work mine just like they did theirs where we have 5 to the 6 over 5 to the 4th as a set of numbers times 7 to the 4th divided by 7 squared as a pair of numbers times 8 cubed divided by 8 squared as a set of numbers. I'm going to rewrite those as 5 to the 6 minus 4 times 7 to the 4th minus 2 times 8 cubed minus 2, which means from there I'm going to get 5 squared times 7 squared times 8 to the first, or just 8. And I don't think they want us to actually finish them up from there, so I'm looking for a 5 squared, a 7 squared, and an 8. Answer is going to be answer B. Come down and check. Everything checks. Easy math, isn't it? It's just a matter of going through the hoops and a matter of showing your good quality supporting work as you're jumping through those hoops. Now we're closing in on the finish line, but we still have some important concepts to work on here. Now we've got 12w to the fifth divided by 2w. And we're going to work this very similar to how we worked it when we were multiplying numbers that were very similar to this. So we're going to start off by taking and switching it over to 
where we have regrouped the problems, 12 divided by 2 and 15, or excuse me, W to the 5th divided by W, what I've done is I regrouped them with their like terms. So the numbers, the constants are going to be a like term and the W's are going to be a like term. So we're grouping it to where they have the like terms or you could also refer to that as a like base. From here, of course, 12 divided by 2 is going to be 6. And then now we're going to focus on our W's. W to the 5th divided by W is W to the 5th my, excuse me, minus 1, also known as W to the 4th. So your final answer, no reason for me to type it in there because they gave it to us right there. 6W to the 4th, easy math. I think we're going to let you all do this last problem here, and we're probably going to quit because, yep, we're going to the applies after that, and I am just about applied out on this problem. Here's your apply problem. I'm going to go ahead and get my screenshot of it while you guys start working on it. Pause the video. Make sure you're doing it the right way, giving me good supporting work. All right. Need to get it done. Let's see what it looks like when I do it. I'm going to do just like they did. I'm going to use my commutative and associative properties to regroup my like terms. 15 divided by 5 times y to the 12th divided by, and now let me clear that, clean that up a little bit, make it look a little bit better for y'all. y to the 12th divided by y to the 4th. 15 divided by 5, that's going to be 3. And now I'm going to take, and I'm just going to kind of combine a step because I think they were overkilling it there. I'm going to do y to the 12th minus 4 here, which gives me 3y to the 8th power, which is going to be my final answer. I'm going to jump back over here. We're going to put it in as 3y. Whoops, I totally put the wrong thing in there. Where is it at? Right there. The eighth power wasn't it eight? I think it was eight. I can't really remember. Let's find out if it was eight. It was indeed eight. Y'all get busy on your homework. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but make sure you give me good supporting work, just like I've shown you, so that you can get full credit for doing it. 